This video will provide instruction and information on the use of Dayton Superior Delta Ties in sandwich panel construction of tilt-up panels, including sandwich panel construction, benefits, wall panel forms and reinforcement, exterior white, insulation panels, installing Delta Ties for wall panels and returns, interior white, tilt-up hardware, tilt-up, Insulated sandwich panels are comprised of two layers of concrete, called wythes, separated by insulation and held together by some means of mechanical connection. Dayton Superior Delta Ties are unique insulated tilt-up concrete panel connectors that provide low conductive connector, unmatched spacing, superior truss design for high capacity, design flexibility, material and labor savings, quick and easy installation, independent testing, four hour rating per ASTM A119 and NFPA 285. A delta tie can be placed on its side or on its end. It is applicable to all brands of insulation. Plus, it can be used for non-composite and partially composite designs. Generally, a tilt-up structure begins with a floor slab or other concrete surface on which wall panels are cast. Once the floor slab or casting bed is cured, forms for wall panels are built. Rebar or mesh is installed within the form to provide reinforcement to the panel. After installing bar supports like the Aztec Strongback Slab Beam Bolster, seen here, and installing reinforcements and reveals, pour and screed the concrete to its specified thickness. Cut the first strip of insulation to the required width per placement drawings, 4 inch minimum to 12 inch maximum, and place it tightly against the side of the form. Add full sheets of insulation to within 4 to 12 inches of opposite edge. Place a filler piece to edge. Pre-cutting insulation panels to size saves time. Maximum delta tie spacing is 24 inches by 48 inches. Install insulation so that gaps are 1 8 inch or less. Foam back tape is available for sealing the insulation joints, if necessary. It is critical that insulation and delta tie installation be completed immediately after the bottom wipe has been consolidated and leveled to its required thickness, no later than 15 to 20 minutes after placement of the concrete to ensure it is still plastic. If the delta tie is not embedded into the concrete while the concrete is still plastic, the concrete will not properly engage the delta tie. Insert the delta tie vertically per placement drawings between insulation sheets. Delta ties can work with 24 inch or 48 inch wide sheets of insulation. The width of the sheets determines the row spacing. If the tie hits the reinforcing mesh prior to reaching its minimum embedment depth, move the tie slightly so that the reinforcing mesh sits in the depressed V section of the tie. The minimum delta tie embedment into the fresh concrete is one and a half inches. Care must be taken to make certain delta ties are installed in its intended orientation in the panel. Soft wood or rubber mallets can be used as an alternative method for installing delta ties. To achieve optimum flow of concrete through the delta tie, straddle the delta tie and shuffle your feet in place. Use a measuring tape or a marked wood stick to make sure delta ties are embedded correctly. To use delta tie connectors and returns, cut the insulation panel to size. The delta ties in the return will need to align with the delta ties on the interior wythe. Per placement drawing, cut a slot that is one inch wider than the delta tie using a quick cut saw. Insert the delta tie into each slot, leaving a minimum of one and a half inches on each side. This will allow proper embedment into the concrete when it's poured. Place the panel tightly against the form and secure the panel to the form with screws. Pour concrete into the form and screed. Post-placement inspection of ties is usually performed the day following their placement. You should check all ties for looseness and proper placement. Identify any that require retrofitting. To retrofit a delta tie, cut insulation around the tie. Using a quick cut saw, cut away the old delta tie and create a replacement slot one and a half inches deep. 
Clean out the slot. Fill the slot with J58 ResiBond Epoxy. Follow J58 Technical Data Sheet instructions. Place a new Delta tie into the slot. Replace insulation around the new tie. Preparation for the interior wipe begins with installing rebar support on top of the insulation. Dayton Superior offers a complete line of rebar and mesh support. In this case, the contractor is using our Aztec X Chair, which provides superior strength with modest surface contact. Lifting inserts are placed in the interior wipe. Install the insert so the directional arrow on the plastic recess plug points to the top or bottom of the panel. Wire tie the insert into position using a short length of additional rebar placed tight against the insert. Dayton Superior offers a complete line of lifting inserts. The contractor has chosen the Dayton Superior T41 ground release system for this job. The T41 is a unique method of lifting concrete tilt-up wall panels into position and allows the hardware to be easily released from the ground. Ladders are normally not required during the hardware release process which greatly increases worker safety and productivity. Brace anchors are recommended because their parallel thread resists vibrating loose when a wind load is applied. Dayton Superior's cast-in-place brace anchors are designed to be easily positioned and tied into the rebar mat of a tilt-up panel for anchoring wall braces to the floor slab or panel. Dayton Superior offers a complete line of brace anchors. The contractor has chosen the Dayton Superior T6A brace anchor. It's a three-quarter inch diameter coil insert designed to be easily positioned and tied into the rebar mat of a tilt-up panel. T6A anchors are available with plastic tip feet and a T21 locator plug. Once the wall panels are formed, reinforcement is set up and lifting and brace inserts are installed. The panel is ready for concrete to be poured. The backside of concrete panels need to be finished and cured to prevent hydration cracks and other durability issues. The location of lifting inserts are easily found by locating the antenna which will project through the surface of the concrete. Using an ordinary claw hammer, tap lightly around the antenna, breaking through the thin skin of concrete to expose the insert. Drive the claws of the hammer down about 3 eighths of an inch between the end of the recess plug and the concrete. Pry up on the end of the recess plug. Use a blower to remove all debris from around the insert and the recess plug. The insert is now ready to receive the lifting hardware. To install the lifting hardware onto the insert, hold the hardware by the bail, release arm, and lower it onto the head of the insert. Check to make certain that the release arm points to the top of the panel. Lower the release arm parallel to the face of the panel. Lay the release line alongside of the lifting hardware so that the line goes to the bottom of the panel. With the crane lines attached, the panel is now ready for lifting. Brace inserts location in the panel is easily found by locating the antenna of the orange locator plug, which will project through the surface of the concrete. Using an ordinary claw hammer, tap lightly around the antenna, breaking through the thin skin of concrete to expose the insert. Plug removal is easily accomplished with a screwdriver or similar device. The bottom portion of the plug forms a cavity for final bolt clearance into the threaded coil. Drive the bolt into the threaded coil with an impact wrench. Attach braces, such as the T14 tilt-up wall braces, to brace inserts. This process is simplest to perform before lift since the panels are on the ground. Rough adjustment of the T14 braces is easily accomplished by telescoping the pipes to the nearest incremental hole. Braces must be at least 15 inches from the floor slab edge. This can be achieved even when braces are not ideally located, as braces can be positioned within a 90 degree radius. Now it's time for tilt up. Position the crane to lift the panels. As panels are lifted and walked into position, extend the braces. Although braces are attached at the top of the panel, they are heavy and awkward to move. So rather than carrying, use brace guards. Final adjustment is achieved by simply turning the brace. 
When the panel is placed into its final position, the braces are attached to the floor slab or other anchoring location and the rigging is removed. For anchoring braces to the floor slab, Dayton Superior recommends using the T13 coil anchor. This coil anchor uses a tapered bolt with a spring-wound coil tang. A new 3 quarter inch carbide drill bit and an impact wrench with torque wrench are needed for installation. Drill a hole partially through the slab at the location where the brace anchor will be placed. Insert the T13 coil anchor with tang attached into the hole. Tighten the bolt with the impact wrench and torque the bolt to 200 foot-pounds minimum. Bolts need to be retorqued when wind exceeds 35 miles per hour per TCA guidelines. For more information, visit www.daytonsuperior.com.